I will talk about the non-liver intervention. I, I, I would, could have entitled my presentation Everything But Liver, but uh, uh, my, the goal of this presentation is not to show you amazing cases, but to provide you with a feedback of my uh, experience with uh, uh, for this city. So this is the outline of my presentation. I have a short background and a short introduction. I will try to sh convey some message about how the system has changed the way I work. And uh, to finish, we will see some bone procedure and urinary interventions. So you must know that uh, I'm very proud of this. Uh, in my institution, we installed the first 4D CT in, in Europe. So I must confess that at the very beginning, I felt a bit lonely. But very shortly, I was followed by my good friend Boris Goyou in Montpellier. So now, up to now, there are four, two installations in France, two are in, in progress, and according to Toshiba, there are uh, around 20 projects in, uh, in Europe. So this is my institution in, in Paris. <coughs> so some key facts. Uh, the version I have is uh, the one with the Aquilon Prime. It's a 80 slice uh, CT. Uh, of course, in the room, we have also an ultrasound system. It's an Applio I uh, Internet. And the system was installed in uh, January 2017. And uh, up to now, we have done uh, 800 procedures. <coughs> so this is the beast. Uh, you see, uh, the, and this is a room. The room is quite big if we compare with uh, what I've seen in Japan. But you must remember that the square meter in France, in Paris, is cheaper than in, than in Tokyo. So we have the chance to uh, have a larger room. Uh, this is the view from the other side, and you see what is great is uh, this uh, very nice uh, window bay here. For, it's very nice for visitors, for the, my colleagues, from the technicians. So it's a great environment, and this is my team. But I was really happy when the system arrived. So just to give you the, the trend in my department and the number of procedures we carry out, so this is an eight-year experience from uh, 2008 to 2016, and you see that the curve is growing up, and uh, the market, the key fact is that once we installed the Infinix 40 CT, uh, the curve dramatically increased, and we have a growth rate of approximately 20% per year now. So it's very, very important in terms of number of procedure, we have uh, multiplied the number of, of procedure uh, in our institution with this system. Uh, Something interesting as well is that we have also increased the complexity of the procedure. Not only the number of procedures increased, but we have do now more complex procedures. And you see all in, in blue here, you have only biopsies. And this, all these procedures here are complex procedures, ablation, drainage, nephrostomies, urinary intervention, vertebral plastic, etc. And so this increases a lot. So just to show you how it changed the way we work, I will try to give you some examples. The, the, something you have to face, difficulty you have to face with regular CT is the moving bed. And the, when the bed moves, you know that the other patients you have have IV lines, ECG cables, uh, catheters, drain, etc., etc. So all these leashes uh, are dangerous because if the bed moves, if you don't take a look at the leashes, it, you can uh, damage this and you can uh, harm the patient. So uh, with the 4D CT, you don't have this problem because the bed is fixed and the gantry moves. So this is a case of an ablation, a quite large tumor in the upper pole of the left kidney. The patient was not uh, operable. And uh, you see that we place uh, ACE cryo needles in, uh, in the upper uh, kidney, of, in the upper left kidney. There is additionally one uh, needle here for hydro dissection. This is the 3D view of the ablation. This is a view during the intervention. And you see that even though we use straight needles, there's plenty of room here to, uh, in this, with this city to do the procedure. And even if we do some controls here, as you can see here, uh, only the elbow of the patient moves a bit because we, the, patient, uh, the patient was asked to fold her elbow, but she didn't understood, didn't understand. But you see that there is no problem with the cable is it, and, and, and with, with the needle here. So it's, uh, it's, it's, it's really, uh, we have uh, plenty of room to do our, our procedure with this system. Uh, this is a control at one month and uh, with marked inflammatory reaction after the procedure at three months, but the patient is now well and the tumor is completely uh, ablated. Here is another interesting case with several needles. It was, it's a liver case, but it's my only liver case. And you see we have placed five cryo needles in the liver metastasis. And you see uh, the needles here 
and you see that uh, the needle fits perfectly in, in the opening of, of the gantry without any, any problem. And if you take a look at the control here, you see the shape. Is, I like very much cryo because uh, of its capability of modeling the ice ball, and uh, the, you can design a ice ball completely covering the tumor, and this is used. tumor as a peer appearance, and you see the ice ball here as a peer appearance as well, so you cover the tumor with uh, nice ablative margins. So let, let's move to a bone procedure. And when you deal with bone procedure, when I ask my colleague doing bone procedure, some like CT, some like fluoroscopy, and sometimes when you have both in the same room, you hesitate, and you're looking at one, you're looking at the other one, which one that we like to take. But it's, there's no compromise, because you can start a procedure with one modality and quickly move to the other one. It's very, very easy and very flexible, uh, and as I will show you uh, shortly. Uh, this, for example, this very is an easy case. It's a very easy to biopsy lytic metastasis uh, of the pelvis. You see the lesion here in CT. You see it on, on the X-ray film here. Uh, you can use whatever technique. You can choose use both. And uh, this was done under fluoroscopy guidance. It's very we are very happy with the technique. It's very fast. No radi almost no radiation. Very good image quality, and we, it, it does the job. Sometimes you want, during the procedure, you want to move from one modality to the other modality. So it's very, very fast. You see the, you have a small metastasis here in the sternum, so we did the biopsy and the CT guidance, and just for the training, for the purpose of training of my team, sometimes I tell them, okay, let's quickly stop. Now we move to fluoroscopy, just to tread, just to practice, and just to hear us. And it's very fast, and depending on if you are ready for this or not, if you are not ready, if the C-arm is in parking position, it takes uh, uh, 60 seconds to be in position, and if you are prepared, it takes less than, uh, than 30 seconds. So you, you know it's very, very fast. There is no compromise, and uh, just, you just have it as, uh, in, uh, parked in, in, in your room, and in case you, you need it, you, you, you switch. Uh, let's, uh, let me show you one case of vertebroplasty. I, I, I know some colleagues use uh, only fluoroscopy, other use cone beam, other use CT. Uh, personally, I use both, and uh, for the training of the young resident, it's very, very useful to have both techniques. We use CT for procedure planning and percutaneous approach, and we use for fluoroscopy for needle progression, tunneling, and cement injection, and we use CT for final control. So uh, the approach is uh, done bilaterally by using CT. You see local anesthesia. You see a needle placement here. And from this point, we move to fluoroscopy. You see how nice the, you see the remarkable image quality and the definition of this image, which ca cannot compete with a, a regular C arm in an operating room. So it's amazing. You see the tunneling step of the, of the procedure with biopsy. And then we inject cement, and we can control an uh, AP view in lateral view. So it's very nice. You can control. And in the end, at the end of the procedure, we have, without moving the patient, we just do a CT to make sure everything is okay. So it's very fast, very convenient, and, uh, and it's very flexible. You can switch modalities whenever you want. Let's move now to some uh, urinary interventions. And uh, this is a case where frequently we have this. You, we place a nephrostomy, or you, your urologist place a nephrostomy, and uh, sometimes urine comes out, sometimes it, it doesn't. And, and you are asked, oh, is, the, is, the probe, is the catheter in place or not? So you can check with ultrasound, but it's not very easy. The best solution is to do a small CT, and you see that the tip of the catheter is just the tip is inside the renal cavity. So at this point, you can just move to the fluoroscopy. You have it uh, available, and you inject a small amount of contrast, and then if you confirm that you're in the cavities, you put a, a guide wire, and then you uh, remove your catheter and add another one. You place it, and that's it. It's very, very simple. It, it takes five minutes, and you have everything at end in one single room. Here is another example. This patient is this patient with an overweight patient with paraplegia, not very easy to move. And this patient had, had a breaker. And, uh, and uh, unfortunately, he had stenosis of the lower ureters. And, uh, but inadvertently, the patient had withdrawn one of the uh, gestant. So the question from the urologist is, could you please replace the left one and please place another one from the white side. And you know that it's not very easy for urologists to catheterize 
to use a retrograde technique to go through the brick air and place the stains. So first step is very easy. We place the guide wire here in, in the renal cavities and we exchange, we place, uh, the, we place uh, the G stain here. And then for the other kidney, you, you see the size of the patient. The kidney is dilated. It is very, very deep. It was, the patient was not very echogenic. So we, in this case, we use CT and we use a lateral approach, very different from the approach used by urologists, but it's, with CT it's possible. We use a lateral approach here. We puncture the kidney, and then from here we inject some contrast, and then we place a guide wire. The guide wire enters it, comes down in the ureter, and exit through the brick air. And from this, you, we use a retrograde technique as for the, the other side, and we push the G stand here and, uh, until we reach the cavities. And in the end, that's it. The patient has two G stand in, in ureter, and in the end, we cut the catheter here. So it's very, very easy, and, and such procedure lasts no, it's no longer than 10 minutes. I will show you also an interesting case we had recently. The patient had a bladder cancer, and, uh, and uh, because uh, it's a T4, it's a stage T4 bladder cancer, and, and the tumor has invaded uh, the rectum here, and, uh, and, and the patient was in, uh, experienced renal failure because of compression of the lower ureter, and, and the urologists were not able to catheterize the ureter to place g stand. So we tell the patient, okay, unfortunately, we, we, we will have to place nephrostomy catheter. But the patient refused. They had, no, no nephrostomy catheters. I don't want uh, tubes coming out, so please do something else. So we decided to place g stand, but uh, from the kidney. So this is uh, what we do. This is a short movie, and the procedure lasted uh, around 20 minutes. So it's a bilateral gist and placement in 20 minutes. So I will show you briefly how it looks like, how we did. So for these techniques, we place the patient prone, and you see that we use a bilateral simultaneous approach. We take care to have the two kidneys at the same level, and you, we inject. You see that urine comes out. It's okay. And then once we check with CT, and once uh, two needles are in CT we, we, and the cavities, we move. You see the bed is coming out. And now we are changing for C-arm. And then you will see that C-arm will approach. And uh, we will start to, to treat that side. So the C-arm will come from this position and go here. You see the C-arm is going here. And now we are ready. C-arm is here. We're injecting contrast on the right side. And from this point, it's very easy. We uh, insert uh, guide wire, you pass the siphon here, we go down, now the ureter is straight, it's very, very easy, and now after inserting a schist, then you insert a G uh, stent, and you see the G stent is, is uh, placed, okay, we remove the guide wire, and that's it for the right side, and for the left side, sorry, and now we move to the other side, again, contrast injection, you see the ureter here, guide wire placement, very, very easy. In this part, is a bit accelerated. As you see, we place the sheath for introduction of, of the g stand. Now, okay, we remove the sheath. Urine comes out, and now we just have to push the, push the g stand, and that's it. Correct position here in the bladder, and then we release the g stand from this, and we are done. It's very, very easy, and uh, it's double just end placement uh, using the Antigrad technique and in, two, la, least in, in less than 20 minutes, and uh, that really made my urologist colleague jealous. Believe me. Uh, uh, one interesting case as well, it was a very emotional case because this young, it's a, it's a poor lady, this uh, poor lady had a bladder extrophy operated at birth, and she had a twin sister. The si twin sister was absolutely normal. And the patient, the, the parents of this lady pay all their attention to the normal sister, and this poor lady was quite abandoned at birth. And so uh, she was lost for follow-up, and she, uh, ultimately she developed renal failure. Uh, so she had renal transplantation in April, and uh, unfortunately, she's a black cat. Unfortunately, she has uh, experienced a stenosis of the renal uh, transplant ureter. G stent was impossible, never retrograde or intergrad. So uh, we did the nephrostomy first, and the option for the urologist, okay, I would like to make an anastomosis from the transplant uh, pelvis, renal pelvis, with the native ureter. But it's very difficult to find the native ureter. 
So what we did, it's not impossible to inject furosemide to, to distance the, ca the cavities of, of, the, of the kidney because this uh, kidney does not, uh, are not functioning. So we puncture the kidney, and uh, when you puncture the kidney, you, go, you won't get urine. You get a sick and sticky fluid coming from the kidney. It's very difficult to navigate, but we made it. We puncture the kidney. We do the, uh, we cried a sh short volume telling us that the guard wire was correctly placed in, within the kidney, then we moved to fluoroscopy. Then we passed the several siphons here. Not easy because the ureter is very hypotonic. Then we went down to the bladder. And then this is a control in the end. You see the G-stent uh, placement. And this is a control in the end. And uh, what I learned from Toshiba is that a happy customer is a repeat customer. And I wonder if a happy patient is a repeat patient. But the patient was very, very happy at the end of the procedure because she knew that the urologist will be able to make the anastomosis here. And uh, the urologist was able to save her transplant kidney. So it's a good, very good uh, story. Uh, so in conclusion, uh, I think it's a one-stop shop for uh, interventional oncology. It's a very, very versatile, I, I, I hope I have convinced you, versatile and flexible tools. Uh, flexible tool. You have everything at hand in one single room, so prepare to walk off, off the beaten track. And as the American poet Robert Frost used to say, two roads diverge in the wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. And I think with, that with such system, I have a four-wheel drive system, and now I don't hesitate to take this path, this uh, less traveled one, and I think I'm ready for adventure. Thank you, thank you for your attention.